Hi, Movie Recaps here. Today, I will show you an action horror sci-fi film from 2020 titled Underwater. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins at Kepler-822, a facility operated by Tyan Industries to research and drill the bottom of the ocean. Mechanical engineer Nora Price is going through her morning routine when the lights start flickering and a leak appears on the ceiling. She leaves the bathroom to investigate and is hit by the sudden waves coming through the walls, indicating there's a pressure breach. She runs down the hallway and tries to warn people on the way to hurry to the bulkhead, but only Rodrigo Nagenda joins her. Once they reach the bulkhead, they intend to close the door so the rest of the station isn't destroyed as well, but the computer doesn't respond. So Nora needs to open it up and force start it under unbearable pressure and little time. Thankfully she succeeds, but she decides to wait before closing up because there are another two crewmates coming down the hallway. It's impossible for them to reach them before the breach does though, so she ends up closing the door to stop the destruction from spreading and those two men are left behind. The computer they're using explodes, making Nora and Rodrigo lose consciousness for a few moments. When they wake up, the emergency recording is telling them the station is 70% compromised. Rodrigo thinks it's an earthquake, although there are some mysterious noises coming from outside. Nora tries to call for help to no avail, so she takes Rodrigo and they go looking for the escape pods. After checking their location and status in the CPU room, they must take a hallway full of debris since it's the only way to reach the pods. As they navigate the rubble as carefully as possible, they hear a voice asking for help and find Paul Abel under a pile of rocks. He joins them after recovering his plush bunny. The three of them call through a very tight space and even find the body of another crewmate before finally making it to the pod bay, where Captain Lucian has stayed behind while others escape in the evacuation pods, all of which have already been deployed. While Nora uses a computer to unjam the door, Lucian sends Paul and Rodrigo to check on the submersibles. Once the room is opened, Lucian takes Nora inside to check her for injuries and sends her to the control room where the guys inform them the submersibles are a no-go. In the control room, Nora finds biologist Emily Haversham and engineer Liam Smith, who are in a relationship. As the other three men join them as well, Emily warned them that the energy accumulated in the station has nowhere to go and could cause a meltdown any minute now. Since they have no way to contact the surface, Lucian suggests they should move to a different facility, the Roebuck 641, which would require them to wear pressurized suits and walk two miles without knowing what could be waiting for them outside, but the crew doesn't like the idea. Liam plays a recording of the last transmission from the drill site, which sounds like the men were being attacked by the same mysterious noise Nora heard before. The temperature outside has also jumped 10 degrees, which doesn't make sense because water doesn't do that. Seeing as they have no other choice, they accept the plan to go to the Roebuck. The crew starts working on suiting up. Emily is nervous because she's never dived before, and nobody has ever walked outside for longer than a few minutes to fix a pipe. Paul makes sure to bring his plush bunny with him, and Rodrigo checks the last two helmets before handing one to Nora. Because of the noise he heard in the recording, Liam decides to grab a gun before leaving, and Paul copies that idea. Once everyone is suited up, they get on the elevator, and Liam warns them that the exterior hatch has been ripped to shreds, so everyone should hold on tight because the pressure will hit them hard. Cracks start appearing on Rodrigo's helmet and Nora notices it, so she tries to tell Liam to not open the door, but it's too late. The water hits them and Rodrigo's helmet implodes, killing him. There's no time to grieve though, they need to get going, so they jump into the cargo lift. Nora feels guilty because she's sure Rodrigo knew his helmet was broken and gave her the last good one on purpose, but Lucian tells her to get used to it. As the lift takes them down, they receive a distress signal from one of the pods. Thinking they may rescue other survivors, Lucian sends Paul and Liam to investigate. Paul gives Emily his money before leaving. It's dark outside and the platforms are unstable, but the guys keep going as they follow Nora's directions. The weird noises from before can be heard here as well, as they find the pod has imploded and is covered by some strange kind of algae-like organism. They also find a body, so since there's no one to rescue, Lucian orders them to come back, but Paul doesn't listen. He's distracted by a weird liquefied shape on the back of the body, which suddenly moves and attacks him. Liam shoots the creature and moments later, they bring it inside. Emily examines it, noticing its talons and the mouth is used to feed on the body, but she can't find any eyes. She's explaining the possibilities of having found a new species when the elevator suddenly loses power and stops moving. The noises from before can be heard outside and Paul realizes the creature they have is a baby, so he shuts the door tight. Nora manages to disengage the elevator, but for some reason, they still aren't moving. All of a sudden, an adult creature appears at the window right before the Kepler explodes. The elevator starts falling without control and the crew hurries to put their helmets back on before they hit the sea floor. They barely make it out in time. Once outside, they need to keep moving fast because the debris from the explosion is falling all around them. Liam is hit, 
But Lucian and Nora save him and help him reach the intermediate station, where they discover his oxygen scrubber is damaged. Nora forces a control panel open to call a mover, which they ride through an access tunnel while they hear the creatures following them from outside. Unfortunately, they're forced to stop the mover midway because the tunnel is flooded, so they continue on foot, only to find a moment later that more debris is blocking their way. Since she's the smallest one, Nora volunteers to dive in and find a new way out, and she does. There's a passage under the debris that may be tight, but is still big enough for all of them to cross. Lucian attaches each crew member with wires before sending them in. They all cross through without issues except for Paul, who can be heard saying he sees something behind him. Since he isn't coming in, the crew starts pulling at the wires to bring him with them. They manage to pull him through, but as soon as he takes off his helmet, his wires start being pulled from the other side. Paul gives them his rabbit before putting his helmet back on, and the crew tries their hardest to keep a hold of him, but it's too late. A creature rips him right out of the suit and kills him. The crew runs away before the creature gets them too and reaches a communications room, where Lucian tries to ask for help to no avail. Liam sees the drill through the window and wonders how it could have been destroyed like that when it weighs 6,000 tons. Emily replies this is their fault for digging too deep into the bottom of the ocean and now she's taking back. She reaches the conclusion that nobody should be down there and Nora agrees. Lucian notices the window is starting to crack and points out they can't stay in there any longer but they're worried about Liam because his suit won't be able to make it. He tells them to go without him because it'll only be dead weight, but the others refuse to leave him behind and agree to help him walk. The four of them go to cross the ocean floor, and not much time passes before a creature appears swimming around them. They turn the suit's lights off, but it isn't of much help. The creature reappears and captures Liam, taking him to a cave. Since they can still see his foot by the entrance, Lucian enters the cave and finds him alive, so he starts pulling him out. After leaving Liam with the girls, Lucian goes back into the cave to retrieve the gun, but the creature finds him and pulls him deeper inside, dragging Nora in as well because she's hooked to him through the wires. Nora lands on a floating platform and Lucian hangs tangled at the edge of it, so she intends to help him but the creature shows up and comes closer to put its mouth on her helmet. Lucian jumps on the creature to push it away, so the creature drags him with it as it descends deeper into the water. The pressure will kill them both soon, so Lucian sacrifices himself and unlocks his suit from Nora's, so she floats away before he implodes. Nora loses consciousness for a few seconds, and when she wakes up, she discovers her suit is failing. After being startled by an octopus, she runs away and finds a door that allows her to enter the abandoned Shepherd station. After crying over the loss of her captain and changing into dry clothes, she checks out the place. Trying to send Emily a message doesn't work but she finds a map of the drilling site in Lucian's old locker. Determined to survive, she puts on a different suit she finds around and grabs a flare gun before going out to the ocean floor again to try to reach the Roebuck as they originally planned. She's following the markers when she starts to hear Emily's voice, so she hurries towards her and causes Emily to run as well because she thinks Nora is one of the creatures. Nora jumps on her and calms her down, telling her how proud she is of her surviving and keeping her boyfriend alive. Together they drag Liam across the floor as they start walking again, keeping their worried minds distracted with chit chat. Nora tells Emily about her fiance, who was Liam's best friend and disappeared during a diving mission he took alone. This is why she hates feeling powerless to change anything, and she thinks it's really cool that Liam and Emily have each other. Eventually, they finally come across the glowing Roebuck station. As they enter it, they discover there is a nest of those creatures suspended from the ceiling, seemingly sleeping or hibernating. After turning off their suit lights, the girls attempt to sneak through, but their plan fails when Emily's oxygen alarm starts ringing. One of the creatures wakes up and grabs Nora, who tells Emily to grab Liam and run for the door. The creature starts swallowing Nora, so she takes out her flare gun and shoots her from the inside, effectively freeing herself. The rest of the creatures are starting to wake up as well, so Nora gets a second flare bullet ready, only to notice the creatures are suddenly being lifted by something huge and growling. Nora shoots her flare gun in the distance and discovers the monster approaching her is the ancient Cthulhu. After a short moment of shock, she starts running away, but Cthulhu lands behind her and causes an explosion that knocks her out. Luckily, she's saved by Emily, who grabs her and takes her inside the station. Nora is running out of oxygen, but her helmet is stuck, so Emily grabs a fire extinguisher and uses it to crack the helmet, allowing Nora to breathe again. After helping Liam out of his suit, the three of them run through different hallways until they find the control room, where they can see Cthulhu and its creatures through the window. Nora checks the station map on the computer, then guides her crewmates to the pod bay. The station is slowly getting flooded, and various doors are being locked by the emergency system, but they manage to find their way after dodging some incoming waves. 
There are three pods waiting for them, but only two of them are functional, and Nora doesn't inform the others of this. They put Liam in the first pod and send him out with Paul's plush rabbit, and then it's Emily's turn, but she refuses to get in when she discovers Nora's lie. Since they're running out of time, Nora punches Emily and forces her to enter the pod. She tells her things will be alright before sending her out. Nora has accepted her fate, but she starts to worry when she realizes the creatures are going after the pods. Not wanting to feel powerless during her last minutes of life, she ideates a plan. Remembering Emily said the stations have a lot of accumulated energy with nowhere to go, Nora uses the computer to initiate an overload of the Robux nuclear core, which causes a massive explosion that kills her, Cthulhu, and its creatures, and allows the pods to escape safely. The movie ends by showing us various news articles and reports that says all the information is classified and nobody is allowed to talk to the survivors. All surveillance footage has been destroyed, presumably by the damage, and TN Industry turns down the government's help with the investigation because they plan to rebuild and keep on drilling. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.